28 elements and a plan, do, check, act. This is something that we're all familiar with, I'm sure. And it's just that model of continuous improvement. So plan, do, check, act, my 28 components fall within these. Okay, next, let's talk about risk-based asset management. And a risk-based asset management system that takes these into consideration, I'm going to consider operations of the equipment and the assets, the risk management plan, and also how to maintain those assets. I'm also going to develop standard work associated with all those. That makes up my system. Okay, risk. Risk is one of the three components that make up that risk-based asset management plan. Okay, so to understand risk and risk management, I need to first identify a risk. I need to do a risk analysis. I need to do a risk mitigation strategy, a communication plan, and also leverage risk tables and risk management tables so that I can better understand the risk to my value stream. Risk treatments, there's four of those. I can avoid the risk. I can also reduce the risk. I can transfer the risk or I can retain the risk. So we also need to understand how to apply those four. Okay, so once I have a risk-based asset management understanding of both operations, maintaining and understanding risk, I have a risk management strategy, I've addressed the, the risk analysis, and I've gone through my treatment strategy, let's now talk a little bit about a simple model that takes all this into account. First is to classify. I have to develop my assets, I have to collect attributes, I need to catalog them, I need to develop the parent-child relationship, I need to put them in a network if it's a linear asset like a pipeline, and then I've also got to do some level of identifying the asset types. So the first thing we do in our, in our risk-based asset management implementation model is classify our assets. Next, I need to do, to do the analysis or analyze. This is where I'm going to do my failure and risk analysis. I'm going to do my criticality analysis and prioritize how I'm going to deploy my asset management strategy, my control strategy. So the control strategy takes the output of the, the analysis when we analyze where the risk and failure are, look for the predominant failure modes, the things that have high risk, and put the appropriate control strategy in place. This could be a predictive route, this could be a preventive maintenance task, like measuring wear on a bearing. It could be a redesign because of the fact that there is no control strategy to lower the risk sufficiently for us. It could also be things like operator care tasks. So these are some of the things that we could use. We could have a critical spare available in the event that the control strategy only allows us to mitigate the risk appropriately to have that critical spare. And then finally, measure. And in measure, we're actually taking and evaluating the performance of the assets against our key performance indicators, trending them, possibly paradioing them, and looking for our limiting factors or the things that are creating the greatest loss to our value stream. So I'm going to measure, take that information to go back and further analyze and control my assets. So this makes up our continuous improvement or a plan, do, check, act. Overall, taking all these into account, just like the four pieces of plan, do, check, act and the 28 elements of part one, and our seven review areas of part two, we've taken all of this into account to allow for operational stability, which in the end is the purpose of asset management. So if you'd like to learn any more about this topic, please contact us at info at lce.com. Thanks for your time.